Welcome, everybody. This is JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals, and JSA Radio, your voice for tech and telecom on iHeartRadio. I'm Jamie Stato Kataya, and on behalf of my team here at JSA, welcome to our monthly virtual CEO roundtable. These virtual roundtables lead us up to our on site CEO roundtables at our C level networking event, the Telecom Exchange, or TEX. Next one up, TEX LA, November 7th, Beverly Hills where we'll be talk network infrastructure readiness for IoT, AI, smart cities, blockchain, bringing 5G to the edge, and more. So if you like this roundtable today, come here, our CEO Roundtables Live. More info at thetelecomexchange.com. So let's get started. Our topic today is an exciting one, Virginia Beach use case, the importance of interconnectivity in today's digital world. And it is my pleasure to introduce you to our executive lineup. We have Mr. Greg Twitt, founder and president of Global Links Data Centers. Vinay Nagpal, a good friend of mine, president of Interglobix LLC. Gary Tarple, president of Metro Fiber Networks Inc., the dark fiber provider in the area. And Rob Hudomi, senior project manager of City of Virginia Beach Department of Economic Development. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. Over the past year, Virginia Beach is quickly becoming this amazing hub, not just for Virginia, the country, but the world, for high-speed global communication. We literally have an explosion going on in Virginia Beach, uh, particularly with unbelievable next-generation cable systems like Cruiser, Marea, and more. Uh, this innovative infrastructure and architecture providing more connectivity solutions than ever before. Companies like Equinix, Global Links, Microsoft, more, all jumping on board to extend capacity and help meet this growing customer demand for, of course, high-speed, reliable connections for cloud and online services. So we really have uh, an incredible thing happening. I'd like to first go around the horn and ask each of you, what role is your company or local government office playing in the growth of Virginia Beach today as this hub for global communications? Greg? Would you like to kick it off for us? Thanks, Jamie. Uh, yes, uh, Global Links has uh, uh, been actively involved in the area. I'm a, a, a resident of Virginia Beach and have been for many years. I uh, saw an opportunity um, when uh, the uh, uh, Telsius cables were announced uh, a few years ago and started looking for um, uh, we were interested in building a data center at the start. What happened was we, um, uh, with uh, Vinay at an NVTC meeting, um, he arranged, Rob was uh, involved at that, that meeting as well. Uh, I think uh, we had a few others. And in particular, the Telsius people, Tabata and Guillermo were there. And they said to us at that meeting, the message was loud and clear. We needed a carrier neutral co-location hotel if Virginia Beach was to become an ecosystem in the data center world. So at that point, we started to look at uh, our options in, uh, in the um, cable landing station area, which is uh, Corporate Landing Parkway in Virginia Beach, which is about three miles from uh, uh, the, uh, the the landing um, at Camp Pendleton. Um, so we found some very high ground there, high for Virginia Beach at 17 feet above sea level. And uh, we now have 20 acres. Um, and uh, out of that 20 acres, we've started with uh, a 11,000 square foot facility that we've had. Uh, and we've got to uh, uh, cat four um, uh, uh, capabilities, and we're building a uh, uh, an uptime tier three level uh, uh, facility that uh, is uh, also uh, N plus one. So our idea is uh, we're a facilitator, really. I mean, basically, what we're doing is a uh, connection in. Uh, Telsit. Um, we're running two diverse H64 
uh, strands uh, from global links into Celsius, the cable landing station, that's Maria and, uh, and Brusa. Um, and we're about, uh, I think we're about 800 to 900 um, yards uh, from them on the same side of the road. So we've got a very strong partnership. We've um, uh, started our um, uh, our um, uh, build in uh, in Celsius, um, and uh, we're well on the way. And in the next two to three months, uh, we'll be fully lit and operational. At this point, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, unbelievable. What I'm hearing is we've got. Uh, Carrier neutral, uh, colo and uh, data center facilities, tier three near the landing station, uh, proximity, Vinay, you can talk to this. Um, but we're, uh, we're, we've checked off all the must haves from a colo data center facility uh, piece. Uh, and of course, that subsea uh, connectivity happening in that facility. Uh, Vinay, you see that as, um, as the right mix there, the right recipe? Yeah, thanks, Jamie, and uh, hi, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on uh, which part of the world you're logged in from. I'm Vinay Nagpal, uh, president of Finoglobix. Uh, we provide uh, solutions primarily focused on the convergence of data centers, uh, subsea fiber, and terrestrial fiber. Been in the industry for about uh, 24 years, uh, focused on um, wholesale, uh, retail, uh, data center services uh, from a connectivity standpoint for the most part. Uh, I also serve on the board of uh, Northern Virginia Technology Council uh, Data Center and Cloud Committee. NVTC is one of the leading uh, tech councils in the country. And it was uh, primarily through NVTC and supporting some of our OTT customers when I was at DuPont Favros Technology is how I personally got involved in the activity in Virginia Beach. Um, and I think, yeah, Jamie, you're right. I mean, the right ingredients are definitely there uh, and it's starting to take off now. And I think there's a significant potential for Virginia Beach to evolve into uh, being the next continental edge or the digital port uh, for the Eastern Seaboard of the United States. So thanks for having me here today. I look forward to the, to the discussion. Um, we're, we're honored to have you, Vinay, as always. And, and Gary, you bring that that special dark fiber uh, offering to the table. Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, thank you, Jamie. Um, my name is Gary Tarpey. I'm president of Cable Associates and its subsidiary company, Metro Fiber Networks. We've build, been building infrastructure in Eastern Virginia and primarily in the Hampton Roads region for the past 35 years. We saw the need for a dark fiber connectivity to bring other carriers and, and, and competitors and, and whatnot into the area. And when uh, the cable landing station was, uh, was done, we, we developed a, a new network of several hundred miles connecting the local data center, data center sites, as well as connection up into Richmond data centers on into Ashburn. So we feel that we will be a big advantage to the community in Virginia Beach moving forward in this digital age. Absolutely, absolutely. And Rob, as uh, the representative of the City of Virginia Beach Department of Economic Development, all this must be music to your ears. Tell us more. Uh, yes, Jamie, it's, this has been very exciting for Virginia Beach. Um, uh, I've been, I'm a senior project development manager for the Department of Economic Development, and I've been working mainly on public private partnership, mixed use development, cell development for most of my career. But about two and a half years ago, when Maria announced they were coming to Virginia Beach, um, I got involved with the owners, which were Microsoft, Facebook, and Telsius, finding a beach uh, manhole location for the cable landing, and then um, uh, site selection for the cable landing station, and uh, the data centers that were, were to follow. So um, that has been, um, for the last two years, I've been very focused on that. And um, uh, we've seen a lot of activity with new cables being announced um, recently. This has been Davenport from the city of Virginia Beach, and I am the city councilman that leads the regional uh, technology initiative. And um, we are very excited uh, with a lot of the things that are happening right now in Hampton Roads and the city of Virginia Beach. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, and, you know, let's go ahead and set the stage about what's happening in Virginia Beach. It's certainly an exciting time. And I have your map right up on, on the screen here. Um, and, you know, it's funny. We have a mutual friend, Frank Ray of Microsoft. I remember when he was talking about Maria coming uh, coming into Virginia Beach, I was thinking, well, what's that going to be like a five-year project? And he's like, no, we're coming, we're putting our, our name down as the fastest subsea connection between uh, 
uh, Europe and and uh, U.S. Virginia Beach specifically, uh, and he made that happen. Can you talk about the various subsea projects, all the different states that they're in, and and how fast this is all happening? I mean, this is stunning. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, Frank's a great guy. You're absolutely right. They made it happen in the fastest possible time in terms of, uh, you know, from a history perspective, it's the fastest subsea cable to be built across the Atlantic in under two years and with the maximum capacity. So the Maria cable, when built and when it was operational uh, as an eight pair system uh, with a capacity of 20 terabits per second per pair was an aggregate capacity of 160 terabits. I say that when built because a couple of weeks back in Panera, which is providing the SLTE equipment for uh, for the uh, for the cable, um, basically improved with their improvements in technology, can now push 26.2 terabits per second per pair, which is an aggregate capacity of 209.8 uh, terabits per second, approximately. So it's over 200 terabits per. For, for the entire system and built in under two years, so which is which is pretty phenomenal, uh, in yeah. my opinion. Um, I think I think there are a couple of uh, couple of very very significant um, paradigm shifts here that are t that have taken place. I mean, if you look at the state of Virginia, everybody knows Northern Virginia is uh, has evolved over the last two decades to be the leading data center market in the world, according to Loudoun County over. Um, 70% of the world's internet traffic flows through Loudoun County. And it's, it's not just that from an economic development perspective, data centers have contributed to uh, upwards of $180 million a year in terms of uh, you know, economic benefits and the tax revenue for Loudoun County. For the entire state of Virginia until now, data centers have contributed $10.2 billion to the, at the state level. Now, all of that connectivity, all of the data that's been sitting pro primarily in Northern Virginia and other parts of the state as well, whether it's Boyton, whether it's Henrico County now, or even going down south to uh, Forest City, North Carolina, up until recently, that traffic to leave the eastern seaboard of the United States had to be you know, routed either through the landing stations in, New in, uh, in Long Island or New Jersey or down south in Florida. So I think what Virginia Beach brings to the table is uh, a very uniquely positioned mid-Atlantic route across the Atlantic. Of course, that that location is now leveraged to connect from uh, North America to South America, and subsequently also to uh, South Africa, to the continent of Africa, and ultimately to Asia. So I think the way it's evolving, it's been phenomenal. And to answer your question in terms of the system, so Maria was the first system to be operational that's owned by Microsoft, Facebook, and Telsius. Then you had Brusa, which is primarily owned by Telsius only. So while Maria was across the Atlantic connecting Virginia Beach to Bilbao, Spain, you have Brusa, which is connecting Rio de Janeiro through branching units in Fortaleza and San Juan in Puerto Rico through Virginia Beach. And then you had the third system, which was SAEX or South Atlantic Express Cable. And that's an interesting system because when it was announced, it was gonna go from Cape Town through St. Helena uh, Ascension and St. Helena Ascension being British Islands and, you know, uh, EU had uh, some um, um, funding approved for that project to uh, get uh, a branching unit in St. Helena and then ultimately connecting through Fortaleza, Brazil to Virginia Beach. And in Singapore, a couple of weeks back, SAEX announced their second leg, which is going to go east from Cape Town through to Madagascar, Mauritius, Singapore and China, India. So it's it's a it's a significant project, of approximately 25,000 kilometers. And the fourth one was the Dunant cable, which Google announced in a partnership with Orange, going from the French Atlantic coast to Virginia Beach. So I think Virginia Beach it's significant in terms of what's happening there. And additionally, people like Gary and others are are actively building additional terrestrial fiber routes to get that capacity distributed uh, where the customers wanted to go. Well, and Vinay, if I could expand on that, uh, you know, what you're seeing is the creation of the crescent moon of technology in the state of Virginia. Uh, everybody knows Ashburn, Virginia. Um, you're starting to see a large aggregation in Enrico County, and you're seeing the creation of the new digital port of technology in the city of Virginia Beach. All of these three localities are working together to make sure that we create 
uh, uh, one of the most robust uh, connected communities in the world. Um, the city of Virginia Beach has taken a lot of action in terms of um, city council action to make sure that we are becoming uh, more and more business friendly in terms of the technology industry. Um, we believe that this is part of our future and we believe we play a key role uh, in the state in making sure that we bring in uh, this bandwidth to make sure that in Rico County and uh, Ashburn, Virginia continue to flourish. Yeah, and I have to say, a mayoral candidate who can talk telecom, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> That's so new. <laughs> Let's just talk about that. Um, and I think not just, not just that, Jamie. I mean, you know, Rob and his team, what they have done over the years in being extremely friendly to the industry, both from a data center perspective, from a subsea fiber perspective and terrestrial standpoint, I think that's also definitely led to where we are at now. And this growth is only going to continue for the foreseeable future. And, you know, let's um, let's also switch our map here um, and uh, and talk. Uh, we, we're focusing in on Virginia Beach, but the impacts of, of what we're seeing um, internationally. Um, you know, Vinay was talking about it in, in terms of uh, on his map, in terms of the subsea cables for sure. But um, I'd actually like to give this one to, to Rob. How many continents are now directly connected to mm -hmm. Virginia Beach by the new subsea cables that we've discussed? Well, Jamie, right now with the uh, with Maria connecting us to Europe and Bruce connecting us to South America, uh, we're, we're currently connected to two. But as Vinay was saying, there are plans to connect from South Africa and also over to India. So. Um, uh, it's growing rapidly. Um, there's other cables that are being discussed right now, but uh, but currently we're we're connected to two different continents, but soon to be three, four, maybe five. Well, and Jamie, what you're seeing is due to our location on the eastern seaboard, uh, uh, it makes the most sense to connect into the city of Virginia Beach in terms of our proximity um, to so many different locales. Um, we've created a business friendly environment and are currently working on something uh, that will be a first of its kind in the nation called a cable landing protection zone, uh, which will ensure the landing of uh, a significant amount of future cables, as we believe that we are the new entry point um, for uh, continental United States. Unbelievable. And I, I love that cable label protection zone. Why haven't we done this earlier? Another great example of how uh, Virginia Beach is teaching other key landing cities um, to uh, to be a step ahead. Love that. Exactly, Jamie. And, and as you're well aware, we have the largest naval base in the world right here. Uh, we have uh, the second largest port on the East Coast. Um, and so we're working with the Navy and with the Port of Virginia to make sure that we're finding, uh, you know, the uh, uh, least intrusive uh, routes so that we don't interrupt naval operations because we love the Navy in our region um, and that we don't mess up any of the shipping routes because uh, the Port of Virginia provides uh, a lot of the goods and services to the Midwestern part of the country. And so there's a lot of excitement about, uh, you know, we love ports in, in Virginia Beach. Now we're creating this digital port and everybody is very, very excited about it. Oh, I, I love that. I love that uh, so many um, of, of our uh, different uh, countrymen, if you will, and women, yeah. uh, from from uh, naval professionals um, to our the government. most patriotic region in the world. Yeah, I just love that. I love that. And yeah, I uh, think just quick, in terms of cable protection zone, if you look at countries like Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, being island countries, you know, they have embraced cable protection zones in a significant way. To Ben's point, I think this is going to be significant for North America, for Virginia Beach to be the trendsetter to really embrace uh, embrace and, and implement those protection zones so that ultimately there are additional cables also being brought into Virginia Beach. Yeah, and this will, be the, this will be the first cable protection zone in North America. Either East Coast or West Coast. Yeah, and there's a lot to learn from uh, from the those Eastern countries that, uh, and, and to, to know that we're doing it for the first time in North America is so impressive. Um, Gary and Greg, um, you guys have an interesting perspective from, from that layer one perspective, from the dark fiber and from the uh, data center, Colo uh, Insights. What are the major OTTs and content players 
uh, that are really jumping in, playing an active role in this new subsea capacity. Gary, did you want to start first? Well, um, we're seeing a, a, a tremendous amount of uh, activity from carriers all wanting to get to the landing station and get to the Colo, to the, the Greg Center, which is it's it's unbelievable. A lot of them we've got non-disclosures; they haven't yet committed, but but um, it's it's a lot of players that aren't in our community now, and and it's all been uh, driven by the landing of this subsea cable, and, I, and it, it's, I think we're just going to continue to see more and more, and they're all huge players, and we're all and some that obviously even myself weren't even aware existed or didn't know of. So it's, it's really been truly amazing. And I think Greg, he's probably, you know, we I've had a lot of conversations with Greg and and I know he's seeing a, a lot of activity on his end far as, uh, you know, people want Colo there and to, to get to these subsea cables. Yeah, and of course, um, if we're talking OTTs, obviously the, the three big ones are Amazon. Oh, sorry, not Amazon, but, uh, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, and uh, and Google, but uh, aside from that, I mean, we have um, uh, 12 commitments um, at the moment, and a, a number of signed commitments. Um, as uh, as as um, Cox Business uh, two days ago um, made a uh, a joint press statement with Global Links and Cox Business that. Uh, They've, uh, they've signed agreements with us. Uh, that's the very latest one. Um, but we've got uh, all the major dark fiber providers coming to us. Um, and we're talking to more every day. And I'm talking 12 at the moment. Um, apart from that, I mean, uh, pretty much everything that, uh, that the internet brings is coming our way. It could be VoIP, drones, mobility. The whole lot is, is coming our direction in relation to this. I mean, it's uh, it's a lot better than we ever thought. Truly, a digital port. Getting back to uh, to what Ben had had coined there, and and Rob and Ben, I'll start with Rob first. Why Virginia? Why now? Hi, Ben. Well, uh, you know, you, you look at uh, the the way that uh, Loudoun County has led, uh, you know, all of the eastern seaboard in terms of um, becoming an aggregation for technology. Um, you know, a lot of times when we hear people talk about the Silicon Valley, the east, they're talking about specifically Ashburn, Virginia. Um, you've seen the uh, evolution of Enrico County with the new Facebook facilities there in the Water Oak Technical Park. Um, and now you're seeing the uh, emergence of a new digital port. Previously, you know, all the transatlantic cables, uh, you know, uh, typically went between the New York, New Jersey area and the United Kingdom and then the South Florida, uh, you know, Boca Raton, Miami area to, uh, you know, some of the different continents in the Southern Hemisphere. And um, now you're starting to see uh, that we have a quicker linear route mileage to uh, Ashburn, Virginia and in Rico County. Um, but not only that, we have the most business friendly environment also. Um, and on November 7th, we're going to have, I would uh, conjecture to say, uh, one of the uh, only cities in the United States that has a mayor that has run um, on a technology platform and making sure that we uh, create an environment uh, that is conducive uh, for all technology related ventures. Um, and so we believe very wholeheartedly that this crescent moon of technology uh, is going to power not only the state of Virginia, um, but uh, all of the Eastern seaboard. And we're working real hard to make sure we take the right steps and the appropriate steps and we're learning as we go, um, but we're getting there. Unbelievable, yeah. and it's so heartening to hear uh, the local government support and technology, uh, you know, uh, unbelievable. We are all in on this. We're all in on this. Can I, can I say there are three words, and it's diversity, latency, and security that brings people to Virginia Beach. Mm. Sorry, Rob, didn't mean to jump in. I just want to mention that why Virginia now was um, previously all the cable, all the transatlantic cables were coming into either New York, New Jersey area, or Boca Raton, Florida, two in Jacksonville. There was nothing in the Mid-Atlantic at all. 
And when Superstorm Sandy hit New Jersey, New York area, damaged some cables, it's kind of a wake-up call that we've got to have diversity, like Greg just said. And uh, Virginia Beach with this person at Ashburn um, was a perfect fit. All right, so Gary, for those of us who are considering Virginia Beach as a case study for advancing the connectivity in our own communities, other, other communities outside of Virginia, what advice do you have? Any challenges that have turned into opportunities for you? Well, I think it's all been an opportunity for me, uh, but I think Virginia Beach has been proactive in, in supporting, uh, you know, with tax situations, with just uh, opportunities, whether it be the, you know, the ease of permits or, or, or things are just being working with us instead of, uh, you know, restricting or making it difficult to operate. I think Virginia Beach has been very proactive and they have been in a lot of cases over a lot of years and in, in, in a lot of different situations. And I think it's a driving the force in other communities in, in, within our region that need to kind of be more proactive and, and look forward instead of just as is because it's changing so rapidly that if, if the other communities don't get on board with this philosophy, they're just going to get left behind. And, and it's really amazing Virginia Beach has been so proactive in doing so. Yeah, couldn't agree more. So, a last question, gentlemen. I'm going to go around the horn and ask each of you what does the future of Virginia Beach look like to you in your crystal ball? Um, take a look in the next year to three years ahead. What do you see Virginia Beach looking like in the next year to three years ahead? Um, I feel like, Ben, we have to start with you first. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Uh, well, uh, you know, I, I think you're going to continue to see uh, Virginia Beach emerge as the new destination for uh, these transatlantic cables. Um, I think that you're going to see uh, uh, in Rico County continue to emerge as a destination for uh, large scale and hyperscale uh, data center operations. And then Ashburn, Virginia is going to continue to operate as the uh, you know, the epicenter um, for cloud, uh, cloud computing and cloud storage. And, and as a result, Virginia is going to lead the way um, in the nation for making sure that we provide uh, all of the technology solutions for the rest of the country. And that's what our goal is, is to be the gold standard for technology. And I think that we're moving in that direction uh, we've got a lot of great partners in Northern Virginia and in the central part of the state and even in, uh, you know, more of the western part of the state in Boynton, Virginia. We love Microsoft. We love Facebook. We love Google. Um, and we are actively pursuing um, every opportunity that exists out there right now. And uh, when I become the mayor on November 7th, that's only going to intensify. Love it. Vinay? Sure. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah, I think I completely second what Ben said. Uh, I mean, people, you know, when you talk about the number of uh, cables that are there at the moment in, in uh, Long Island in New Jersey and Florida, so between the two locations combined, there are a total of 35 subsea cables. So Florida has 22 in, New, in Long Island and New Jersey has 13, uh, connecting to 44 countries around the world, 34 countries to the state of Florida and 10 countries to Long Island and New Jersey. So my point being that, you know, if you look at the city of Marseille, that's been a great example for a public-private partnership that Rob was alluding to earlier. When they've got 13 subsea cables now, by the end of next year, it's going to be 17. I think there's a significant potential from that perspective for Virginia Beach as a diverse location. Uh, I also believe that in terms of uh, the data center market itself to continue to go elsewhere and go beyond Ashburn, which we are seeing now already to take place, whether it's Prince William County, whether it's Stafford County, whether it's Henrico uh, County or, uh, or other places, I think that will continue to happen. And also we'll have larger and larger um, ter terrestrial fiber cables. I'm gonna have a sample of a 3,456 strand cable. The subsea cable comparatively is a smaller one. This is a four uh, fiber pair cable. So we'll have more advances in technology take place in terms of fiber count we have more capacity pushed through, and I think ultimately it's going to benefit the industry in Virginia Beach will continue to grow to be a significant connectivity hub globally. Love it, love it. And Greg, I'm sure you must agree with that sentiment. Yes, but both of those. Um, and from uh, our perspective, uh, 
I feel that uh, we're going to fill uh, our, our properties and probably end up with four, maybe 400,000 square foot of uh, CLSs and data centers. Um, along with that, I think that uh, Virginia Beach is in a really good position because of all of this to, uh, in the next two or three years, to attract a lot more enterprise and be a, a very strong city in the future. Barry? Well, I think it, they're all correct in, in, in what I'm, my philosophy and my thinking about this. All these subsea cables and everything coming into Virginia Beach are all going to be requiring a, a way out of Virginia Beach to, to, to other communities such as Ashburn. I know we've spoken of Ashburn. And we don't want to take it all out of Virginia Beach, Gary. No, well, I know that, but it's going to connect everything. <laughs> But I think we're going to see these cables going south as well. You know, we've got a, we've got the lowest latency, 100% underground route currently going into Richmond and on into Ashburn. But I see it going into Charlotte, and Atlanta, and other areas south, being in the central location, which is going to bring all these subsea cables to Virginia Beach, and it's going to open so many opportunities in Virginia Beach. And I just I just see a tremendous amount of growth in in the technology space in Virginia Beach over the next three to five years or one and, to five. And, and Jamie, if I could, um, when you have companies like Global Inks making the types of investments that they are, um, you know, we're starting to see that a, a, a technology ecosystem is starting to develop in, in Virginia Beach also. And so this goes right hand in hand again with the crescent moon of technology um, and what Vinay was talking about. Um, you know, there, there are going to be other opportunities for uh, co-location data center facilities, and, and we're hoping to get some of those opportunities here. And Global Links has uh, been an excellent partner that has provided us some great opportunities here. And the city of Virginia Beach is committed to making sure that everything that they do is successful. Absolutely. Rob, any closing uh, thoughts about the future of Virginia Beach? Uh, sure, Jamie. I think um, in the next three years, we, uh, we are very well positioned to receive many more cables, I, I would say between four and six at least. Um, we have two uh, beach hole beach hole locations, diverse locations for the cables to land in both Camp Pendleton and Sandbridge. And then after the cables land, of course, they have to build a cable landing station and data centers, which we have corporate landing technology park, which has um, a 325 acre park with 160 acres right now, show already available for uh, development for uh, uh, new, new data centers and cable landing stations. Also, we've taken a lot of initiatives with, with Ben's leadership. Um, Virginia Beach cut its, its uh, tax rate on computer equipment for data centers from $4 per hundred to 40 cents per hundred, which makes us the, the lowest tax rate in the state. Um, we're also doing the cable protection zone, as you said. And also, the, all, all these cable landing stations and data centers need a tremendous amount of power. Corporate landing is a certified Dominion Energy Data Center Park. So the power is there, it's ready to go. Um, and we also are also creating a technology for urban landing. So we've got the, oh, the, the areas for the land, and we've got the uh, the land for the uh, development of the cable landing center. So we're we're ready to go. We're up for business. We're, we're real excited about the future. Wow, I just love this. This Virginia Beach set success story. Truly, when government and technologists work together um, to create such an international gateway. Hub. We are so thrilled and excited. Eyes are all on Virginia Beach. Thanks, gentlemen, for your insights. Again, our all-star panelists, Mr. Greg Twitt, founder and president of Global Links Data Centers, Vinay Nagpal, president of Interglobix, Gary Tarplay, president of Metro Fiber Networks, Rob Hudami, senior project manager of City of Virginia Beach Department of Economic Development, and Ben Davenport via phone. Thanks for calling in, Ben. Virginia You're welcome, Beach. Jamie. Councilman and mayoral candidate, get out the votes. That's right, Jamie. And next time you come to Virginia Beach, we're going to take you on a tour. Uh, I'm there. I am so there. You know, I'm a Virginian myself, so I couldn't be more pleased. <laughs> this wraps up our latest virtual CEO roundtable. Come meet us in person November 6th and 7th at the Telecom Exchange in LA, where Vinay is joining us. Uh, he will be joining other thought leaders from Microsoft, AWS, and more on best partnering practices when working with cloud and content providers on building necessary network infrastructure. Perfect topic, of course. I'm, I'm sure 100% certain Virginia Beach will come up. So uh, come, come see our C-Levels in person. 
limited seats are available, thetelecomexchange.com. And to feature your thought leader here next time on our monthly virtual CEO roundtables, go ahead and email us, pr at jsa.net. Thanks for tuning in to JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals, and JSA Radio, your voice for tech and telecom on iHeartRadio. Until next time, happy networking. Thank you.